Hey everyone, I'm reacting to a lecture by a leading researcher on nutrition, lymphedema and lipedema. He's talking about how our food affects inflammation, lymph flow and even cell behavior. As someone living with this condition, I'll be adding my own thoughts and experiences. There's a lot of science, but I'll be breaking it down into real-life practical stuff. Let's jump in. Lymphedema is swelling. It's from overloading the lymphatic system. Basically, all chronic edema has a lymphatic component to it. It is lymphedema because uh, nothing really returns to the blood circulatory system. And the overloads come when the uh, carrying capacity is, you know, we're, we don't have enough yellow trains compared to the number of passengers for the yellow trains. And that leads to, to uh, fibrosis and fat. I love the yellow train analogy. Makes lymph overload visual and simple. Lipedema is complicated. We don't really understand lipedema. There is a, an effort underway to develop a new standard of care and, and new diagnostic do a new diagnostic criteria, but it has many components to it. There is a lymphatic component to it. There is lymphatic abnormalities in the very early stages of lipedema. There is visible lymphedema swelling in the later stages. It's considered a fat disorder. It's also considered to be a connective tissue disorder because there are collagen abnormalities that affect the, the way the fat cells expand. <clears throat> and frequently, um, women with it also have Ehlers-Danlos or hypermobility. It's important that he's acknowledging that lipedema is not just fat, it's related to connective tissue and lymph flow. We view lymphedema as being a gut issue because for a couple of reasons. Um, and more than half of all lymph comes from the gut, particularly half of the lymph in the body comes from the liver. But the gut bacteria or the gut microbiome plays a key role in almost everything. I didn't know half of the lymph comes from the gut. That blew my mind. It regulates and can impact your, your metabolism, your energy level, the way foods are absorbed, the foods that you crave, the foods that you want to avoid. Makes me think different about cravings. Gut bacteria influences what we want to eat. The, the microbiome regulates estrogen levels. So when you have abnormal estrogen levels, that's because the microbiome is in a state of, of what we call dysbiosis. It, factor one, the, the lymphatic system is responsible for the delivery of fats from the small intestine into the bloodstream. And if you're eating a lot of, of fat, this can increase the load on the lymphatic system um, because it's simply more, that, more fat that has to be carried. And you can minimize this by, by not eating too much fat, eating more of the short and medium chain fats, which are not processed through the lymphatic system. They're absorbed directly through the wall of the small intestine. And then the number two factor is, is fatty liver disease. Uh, and, and other forms of liver, liver disease. But this can really be a factor in overloading the lymphatic, lymphatic system. It can lead to swelling. It also, when you have fatty liver disease, it leads to muscle weakness. It makes it harder to exercise. It, you actually have less energy, less ability to, to move. And it, of course, feeds into gut dysbiosis and, and other issues. And the, one of the key drivers of fatty liver disease is fructose. And fructose is, um, as I'll explain, is, is a form of sugar and it is metabolized differently and it goes to the liver and it gets converted into fat. So the corrective changes are minimizing the fats, uh, increasing choline from, uh, from your green leafy vegetables, eggs, seafood, and omega-3 fats, which are an important factor in liver health. And many people have gotten away from, from eating eggs and eating other things that are, so they're not getting enough choline to help keep the, the liver happy. And then of course, um, inulin fiber, as ex I'm not gonna talk about that much detail today, but it's explained in the book, 
is a key factor in keeping the, the gut and the liver happy. So gut dysbiosis, in particular, what we're concerned about with the, with the imbalance of the gut microbiome is the overgrowth of a class of bacteria called gram-negative bacteria. This includes E. coli. <clears throat> there are many varieties of E. coli, some of which are actually beneficial, some of which are actually quite toxic. The endotoxins stop the pumping action of the lymph vessels and they make the lymph vessels leaky. And this is... Gram-negative bacteria making lymph vessels leaky? That's next level info. A key mechanism in why, why you get so much inflammation that extends beyond the, the gut from this gut dysbiosis. And there are a number of factors that can contribute to, to, to dysbiosis one of which is, is antibiotics, and of course if you've had cellulitis, you've had antibiotics, which disrupts the balance of bacteria in the gut. He's explaining why antibiotics mess with us long term, not just gut upset, but immune and leaf impact. But particularly a high diet high in refined carbohydrates, where you have lots of sugars, you have lots of fats that, that promote the growth of the, of the gram-negative bacteria, and if you're not getting enough inulin and other fibers. So this is to correct this, we try and minimize the refined carbohydrates, increase the inulin, and fermented foods help to, to restore the, the proper balance of the gut bacteria. And the gut bacteria and the endotoxins, among other things, feed into gut permeability. This is where the mucosal barrier at the, and the small intestine is damaged permitting things to escape from the intestine that shouldn't, that shouldn't. And there are a number of things that will do this, including gluten. There are many forms of gluten sensitivity, and many people react to gluten, and gluten is a highly refined carbohydrate in itself. But it's not just people with celiac disease who, are, who should be avoiding gluten. Uh, it's something that, that many people should should avoid because it raises the blood sugar quickly it promotes the gut it promotes the, the gut permeability and it feeds into to fatty liver disease so the corrective actions for improving gut permeability are, are avoiding gluten minimizing alcohol intake and increasing inulin fiber intake and then factor five is leaky lymphatics so this is caused by the endotoxins um, and the other factors. You need enough argi arginine to have to um, keep the lymphatics together. And so you want to increase arginine from foods that, like fish and soy and lentils um, and foods that provide the basis for ni nitric oxide. And what we started with was the abnormal VEGF signaling. This is a, a factor in, in the lymphatic system and the, the blood system. It's particularly a concern with, for, um, for <clears throat> cancer. Cancer cells or tumors can only grow the size of a pinhead if they're not able to establish their own blood supply. If they are able to trigger abnormal blood vessel growth through this through this signal through this biological signal, then they can have the ability to grow to become larger. Um, and there are a number of factors that lead into this, including all the things we've talked about above, as well as as obesity and uh, physical pressure, and high salt diet. So we have factors that will counter the VEGF signaling that are on the next slide and keeping the salt in a, in a healthy range. And that turns out to be a, an important factor in other things. It's also important in lipedema because there seem to be some abnormalities in the way salt is, is processed in lipedema. So here are some of the anti-angiogenic factors that are found in common foods. And you have this in the, in the book so you can uh, see it. But what it comes down to is that, that the the factors that fight the abnormal VEGF signals are found in all of your colorful elements of the fruits and vegetables.
and then we have uh, two kinds of essential fatty acids or, or a number of kinds of essential fatty acids but the two kinds that, that we focus on most are called the omega fatty acids there's the omega-6 fats and the omega-3 fats need some of each of these because they are essential fatty acids but you want to shift the balance towards the omega-3 the anti-inflammatory fats and decreasing the omega-6 so that means cutting out a lot of the processed foods and the uh, grain-fed beef the uh, animal products and increasing the things like wild fish walnuts flaxseed um, other food sources or or, or supplements that have the, the healthier omega-3 fats. I didn't realize how messed up our omega had gotten. We used to eat three times more than we do now. The fructose is normally 50% of sugar. Unless it's a high, high, unless it's a corn sweetener, in which case it's 55 to 90% fructose. And this is a driver of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because a small amount of fructose can be absorbed in the small intestine. A large amount goes to the liver where it's converted to triglycerides and stored as fat. Um, and the liver is a major source of lymph and as you disease the liver, the lymph output goes up. Now we talk about, we recommend a whole foods diet and we recommend rail against packaged foods. And one of the reasons for that this is one example of a food additive. This is maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is made out of corn. It's a processed cornstarch product. <clears throat> it is very prevalent. It's in 60% of packaged foods. Most people are eating it three times a day. If you've ever seen a little packet of, of powdered artificial sweetener, well, those packets are mostly maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is in everything, even sweetener packages. Maltodextrin raises the blood glucose very quickly, um, but it also changes the gut bacteria. It changes the E. coli, it changes the other gram-negative gut bacteria so that they become adherent and invasive. This means they can break down the barrier, the mucosal barrier in the small intestine. They can colonize the intestine which means that you end up with many, many more gram-negative bacteria. They're not just passing through as part of the contents, they've set up housekeeping. And whenever more sugar comes through, they can multiply and divide. And they can, uh, the bacteria can invade the macrophages and spread to other parts of the body. So this is one, one example of a food additive you want to stay away from. I love this. This is not about going on a diet, it's sustainable eating patterns. Other important factors. Um, when you eat counts. Eating meals, eating two or three times a day, not grazing continuously throughout the day, not constantly walking around with, a, with your Starbucks ad addiction. Uh, trying to set up your day so that you have a fast of, of at least 12 hours between when you when you last eat and when you at, at, at night and when you eat again in the morning has been shown to reduce the risk of diabetes cardiovascular disease and cancer and sleep affects metabolism and this is this is important and metabolism affects sleep um, so it's important that you try and get seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Humans actually have been shown not to do well on less than seven hours, even if you think you're getting by. And uh, sugar-sweetened beverages, you want to stop for many reasons, including their effect on, on sleep. The sleep and sugar connection is so real. The more tired I am, the more sugar I want. It's a vicious cycle and you need to be sure that you get adequate zinc because that's important for sleep, especially in older people. And activity is important, but you need to change what you eat will help you become more active, will help you to deal with all of these other issues. This talk gave me so much to think about. He's mentioned many things that I've gone through. Inflammation, dysbiosis, gut issues, sleep issues. I know it can be very hard to change when you're already exhausted. Understanding science really helps. Let me know in the comments what has helped you manage your lymphedema or lymphedema. What are you still struggling with? 
Hit like if this was helpful. I'll be doing more content like this soon. And subscribe so you don't miss them.